Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Brian Thatcher and welcome to Mercy Unbound. It's a series that aims to provide hope and avenue for healing and then one that will help you understand and then live the great mercy of God. Today's interview is not going to be so much of an interview as much as a sharing I want to give you on what a divine mercy cynical of prayer is, how it got started, the history, our mission statement, the meetings, the format, etc. Going to a little more detail, we get a lot of calls about Divine Mercy Senegals. What what are they and how do they operate? Uh, and I want to give you the history as well because it's quite interesting. Um, 28 years ago in our local parish, the pastor was forming small Christian communities of prayer. People would read the next week's gospel and talk about it and share and so when they went to mass the next week they would get more out of the reading well i asked our pastor if we could instead go through the diary of saint faustina divine mercy in my soul and um, these were writings she had written down at the lord's request about her apparitions the messages and uh reflections throughout her daily life uh, in the last few years of her life as she was writing this diary and and we just loved it um, we went through it we finished we got done we did it again the next time I brought in for our group some scripture and catechism references and uh, wrote manuals put together with the help of the late father Seraphim Mikolenko a Marian priest who was really considered one of the world's experts on divine mercy and he can celebrated the mass with St. Pope John Paul II in 2000 on the St. Faustina's feast day. So we put together these manuals. This is manual number one. This is all available at the Marian Helpers. Um, the number there to call, 800 numbers, 1-800-462-7426 or you can go online to shopmercy.org. Each manual has its own code. Everything you order there, you should have the code, but the manual one is CFM1, which stands for Seneca Formation Manual 1. There are three manuals that take you through the entire diary. Uh, they're also available in Spanish. For instance, the code for the Spanish would be CFM1S. Or you can just search for cynical manuals. I'm sure they'll pop up. A little flyer we put together years ago called Becoming a Eucharistic Apostle is helpful because it goes through the format and um, helps, helps you understand what the purpose of the groups are. As we begin to um, grow and word got out of our prayer groups uh father michelenko called me up to the marians uh, probably 1997 late and uh, we discussed and he had done a lot of prayer and the marians asked us to become part of the marians as an apostolate <clears throat> since then we have been actually written in their statutes in rome but it's interesting uh father had done his research so to speak and had read the spiritual diary of blessed george metalatus from about a hundred years before bishop was um a very holy man blessed at this time and uh he had found a, a writing in his diary which kind of affirmed his belief that we should come under the marians blessed george wrote on october 27 1910 how much good lay men and lay women could do if they were only instructed and enlightened beforehand in matters of faith, informed about the needs of the church, and kindled with the fire of holy zeal, and then organized into groups and attracted to the work of spreading the faith. They would be able to bring Christ into places we priests could not even approach. And it's interesting because... The spiritual diary of St. Faustina is so rich 
she only had two winters of education. She could barely read or write, and yet such a collection of deep theological comments uh, that she has written in her diary that that single cynical of prayer we started back nearly 30 years ago, there's thousands of cynicals in the United States and in over 45 countries. So you can go online and get the manuals in English and Spanish. If you're in Mexico or Central South America, you can get them uh, in Puebla, uh, Mexico at the Divine Mercy Center there. Uh, the Marians are in the Philippines. They have the manuals there out of Manila. Uh, in Uganda, the books have been translated into a major dialect, Lukanda, uh, and uh, hopefully that'll spread across Uganda. Uh, manuals have been written in Portuguese. I'm not sure at this point whether they're still available in Brazil, but um, remember the message of divine mercy has been the fastest growing devotion in the church, in the history of the church. And so let's take just a minute to talk about the purpose of the cynical. You know, we have prayer groups and those are tremendous things because prayer is powerful. Uh, but this is really more than a prayer group or different than a prayer group because there is prayer, there's song, but the key element in the cynical is the faith sharing. We have each lesson or cynical meeting laid out. There's readings out of the diary, generally five pages. We bring in a little scripture and a little catechism. We have questions to get the discussion going. But that's where you really see hearts begin to heal as people open up and begin to share their spiritual experiences and how it relates to what they read for the week. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the format. Um, the meetings last no more than two hours, hour and a half to two hours. Uh, we encourage starting with some song. The groups pick what kind of songs they want. They can be Marian songs. They can be praise and worship songs. They can be contemplative songs just to kind of calm the spirit down or get in the right frame of mind for what is going to happen. Then we do about five minutes or so of prayers of gratitude. Now, most of us, when we say, well, let's pray, we, we ask right away, Lord, give me this. I want this. Help me with this. At this point in time, that's not what it's about. It's prayers of gratitude, thanking God for all the blessings, because it kind of helps us remember we are all very blessed, even if we're in the midst of difficulties. And then the key element is 30 to 45 minutes of faith sharing. As I talked about, uh, for instance, one of the lessons was on St. Faustina talked about how the tongue got her in trouble. And she said, the tongue has a mind of its own. And we have questions for discussion and people begin to share and talk about how the tongue may get them in trouble or other quotes in those five pages. Now, the facilitator, we call it the facilitator of the group, is not a teacher. It's merely one who guides people through the groups. As you know, some people talk more, some people talk less. So the facilitator helps people stay on track and maybe tones down the one who wants to do all the talking and at the same end, bring out the person who is quiet and introverted and, and doesn't share as much. Um, we encourage everybody to read the lesson the week before, take an hour, contemplative time, read the diary, look at the questions, so you'll be more prepared. But if for some reason the week goes by and you can't didn't have time to read, come anyways. Uh, I remember years ago, I don't remember the topic we were on, but I was well prepared. I thought I had some comments that would be helpful, but then a person came in at the last minute, hadn't read, and some of her comments were so spiritual and, and insightful. And I remember kind of being blown away because I thought, wow, that's really incredible stuff you're saying. So just come to the meetings, be faithful, be persevering. At week 50, for those who have persevered, that completes manual one. Uh, we have what's called an induction ceremony, and it's kind of a reiteration of baptismal promises and encouraging people to continue to spread divine mercy 
and the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, which of course is the sum and summit of our faith. And we have certificates that we'll send people uh, for the members so the facilitator can hand out during that induction ceremony. Uh, but you'll see amazing things happen. Um, I'll just share one with you. It happened years, like 25 years ago. Teresa has since uh, passed on. I, I recently went to her funeral. But the lesson for the week before was on forgiveness. Faustina and the Lord both talked about the need for forgiveness. And Teresa came in and said, well, let me tell you what happened since last week. The lesson was on forgiveness. And on Wednesday, my daughter called and said my first husband had called her and said he was terminally ill. So Teresa said, well, she knew she needed to reconcile with him because they had been divorced for 20 years. It had been such a stressful divorce. There was never a kind word spoken between him after. The children would have him over for holidays and the tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife and she knew she had to go reconcile. So she asked her daughter to ask her first husband and they, the two of them went on, on a Friday. She said, uh, you know, he was very angry still at me, laid into me really good, but I gave it back because we were both so hurt through the divorce. But at the end of it all, they laughed, they cried, they embraced, they said their goodbyes. And on Saturday, this gentleman who had been away from the church for 20 years, he blamed God for the divorce, called in a priest, received the anointing of the sick, Holy Communion, last viaticum, went to confession, and on Sunday, he died. I often wonder what would have happened to his soul had Teresa not taken that opportunity to be a reflection of this image of God's forgiveness for all of us. Remember, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. And all throughout the New Testament, there's talks about forgiving and how many times must I forgive? And even Faustina in her diary wrote that we resemble God most when we forgive our neighbors. So you want to be Christ-like? We have to forgive. But that was the lesson and the fruit of that one-week lesson. Um, as I mentioned, the cynicals are all over the world, in Africa, many countries. Um, and, and throughout the cynical diary readings, you'll learn much about the image. Uh, you'll learn about Faustina's love for the dying, her episodes of bilocation to the bedside of the dying. She would be awakened in the middle of the night. One time a nun woke her up in the middle of the night and said, pray for me, I'm dying. And this nun was 100 kilometers away. Well, she went to the chapel and prayed until she heard in her heart, oh, thank you. And the next morning, all the other nuns were gathered around the breakfast table talking about, did you know sister so-and-so died during the night? Just so many things. Eucharistic, how the Lord talks about his real presence and how he wants to be united with people in Holy Communion and how no one comes to visit him. He said, they treat me as a dead object. Our, our logo for Eucharistic Apostles is taken from a vision that Faustina had of the rays of blood and water emanating from the monstrance on several occasions, going out to the people and out to the world. That's what's supposed to happen. These rays of blood and water, which you will learn about what they symbolize, what they mean, going out to your heart, healing your heart, and then you sharing this love with others. The Lord told Faustina, mankind will not have mercy until it learns with trust trust in my mercy. So we have the three manuals. You'll need a diary. Again, you can get this through the Marian Helpers Center at shopmercy.org. Uh, at every meeting, you should have present a Bible and the catechism. Uh, we're not trying to make people biblical scholars, but for instance, Faustina talks about in one lesson or more on purgatory. So one of the questions I put in there was, what is the church teaching on purgatory? And, and you discuss it and what the catechism teaches. And um, just, just simple things like that, the rosary, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you do when you finish manuals one, two, and three? Well, we have a book four 
written by my friend, colleague, Dr. Robert Stackpole of the JP2 Center of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge. Um, Mary, who she is and why she matters. It's a collection of 18 chapters or teachings on different theological aspects of who Mary is and why she matters. There's a small section in the back on some apparitions that I had written, uh, Lourdes, uh, Fatima, uh, Cabejo, etc., that I hope you'll enjoy as well. Um, so that is the Divine Mercy Cenacle. And, and remember, the Cenacle was the place where the Last Supper occurred. Jesus came walking through the walls after his resurrection to a scared group of apostles. And what did he say to him? And if you look at this image behind me, I, I bet it was very similar. His hand is raised in a blessing. And he said, peace be with you. And the cynical is also the place of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles. So we want the Holy Spirit to enter our hearts, change our hearts. One point, Eucharistic Apostles of Divine Mercy, our ministry, and you can find more about us at the Marian Divine Mercy site at thedivinemercy.org. Scroll down and click on Eucharistic Apostles. But you know, you're going to learn about the feast day, the graces of the feast day, this miraculous image, how it, how it was developed the words, Jesus, I trust in you, what all that means. You got the chaplet of divine mercy. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your most dearly beloved son. Well, that's what Catholics believe Jesus is present in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So this is a Eucharistic prayer. So we have this beautiful devotion. And yet for us, we look at the cross and we see the vertical beam of Jesus's love for us. He told Faustina, my gaze from this image was the same gauge as from the cross of pure love, reaching out, forgive these people, they don't know what they're doing. But remember, there's a horizontal beam as well, and that's our relationship with each other. So we don't just learn about the devotion and stop. We have to live this message. It's a way of life. The key elements would be through forgiveness, as we talked about, trust in the Lord. What does that mean? Trust doesn't mean everything's going to be fine. Trust doesn't mean we're not going to have sacrifices and trials and tribulations on earth. But Jesus, I trust in you. Thy will be done. That's the goal for us to walk in God's holy will. And remember, God is love. And if we emanate love in our hearts to others, we are being reflections of Jesus himself. And we're called to be merciful. We don't keep this message to ourselves. And, you know, some people think Catholics focus too much on works of mercy, but that's how we express our love for Christ. In, in James, remember, Faith without works is dead. You won't want to keep this to yourself. It comes into your heart and it overflows and you'll overflow that love through mercy to others, through the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. We're going to learn a lot about suffering. We don't have to go out and look for suffering. You know and I know there's plenty to go around. Faustina said suffering is a great grace through suffering, the soul becomes like the Savior. We must suffer out of love and love while we suffer and carry our cross as best we can, but it's difficult. So we're going to learn again that this message of divine mercy is a way of life, that we're called to live and lead a sacramental life with reception of Holy Communion and going to confession as our station in life permits. But it was in the confessional that the Lord told Faustina that it's in the confessional that the greatest miracles take place. He's a forgiving God, but we have to be humble. Blessed Mother actually came to Faustina numerous occasions. 
one occasion she said, you must practice those virtues most pleasing to God. First, humility, humility, humility. That was number one. It's kind of like in real estate, location, location, location. But humility is a key virtue, and we're going to learn about humility. So it's a tremendous spiritual walk. You get very close to the people in your group. And we encourage the group to be no more than 12 members because it kind of cuts down on the faith sharing. People need, you know, they want to share what they read and what's in their heart. And if, if it gets too big, form another group. That's fine. Do keep in tabs with us. You know, go to thedivinemercy.org. Uh, you can email us off the website and uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch with you. We want to know about your group. We have you registered. If you go to that same website, click on the Eucharistic Apostles and say, find a cynical near you. We want to make sure everything's up to date. Um, but it's just been an, an incredible journey for me the last 30 years of uh, spreading divine mercy. I've been able to travel all over the United States, Canada, Central and South America, India, Philippines, Samoa, Solomon Islands, uh, Eastern Europe. Um, God has been very good to me, and um, we're continuing. The work is just really beginning. So many people need to hear this message of mercy. If you feel he's calling you, please look at the website on how to start a cynical I hope this video is of help. Don't be afraid. It's very simple. It's very easy. We strongly encourage you, though, to follow the format. To follow the format. I didn't create it. I didn't develop it. I just adapted it from the basic Christian community or small Christian community concept. And the groups that have fallen by the wayside over the years, we found it's generally the ones that try and do their own thing. You know, they, they, they got to make it better. But this is a tried and proven uh, approach. And not everybody will last. Not everybody will stick with it. Um, that's okay. People may come in and out. That's okay, too. One thing we found is that getting this message of divine mercy, over a few years, people get so much in love with it that they then get more active in the church and, and get involved in other ministries. Sometimes people say, oh, we're so discouraged because so-and-so uh, can't make the meetings a lot. She's now so involved in pro-life work. Well, I think that's tremendous. That's that's beautiful. So just stay in touch with us. Don't be afraid, as St. Pope John Paul II would say. And uh, stay in touch with us. And uh, all the best. Let us be reflections of God's love and mercy to a hurting world. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video portion. The podcast can be heard at anchor.fm slash drbryan.com. B-R-Y-A-N Thatcher, T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R, and on all the major podcast forums. I would love to speak at your church or conference, and please consider supporting our efforts to spread the truth to a hurting world. Thank you again. And for more information, go to the website at drbryanthatcher.com.